Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, Batman. Oh, that one's good. Oh, love the lighting. That one's great. <laughs> Mr. Incredible. Oh, the cartoons are sick. Oh, <laughs> the Simpsons. Hey, I'm not even got eyeballs there. That's crazy. I don't know what country I'm president of, but they got a lot of stars. Pirates of the Caribbean, there's my ship. <laughs> Minecraft, hey. Ah, uh, that was supposed to be Zelda. <laughs> Oh, the Godfather. Uh, Rocky. Hey, <laughs> Lebowski. Uh. All right, you wanna instantly have amazing AI created photos of yourself, your friend, your dog, anything you can think of just like the ones I showed you without any tech skills at all. And it's all completely free. You don't have to download anything. You don't have to sign up for any subscriptions. And you can do the whole thing with about 10 clicks of the mouse in 20 minutes then you're in the right place because I'm going to show you step by step what is by far the easiest way to access the Dream Booth Stable Diffusion interface and create your own custom AI rendered images. All you need is a Google account and an internet connection. Okay, we're well, going to start by going to this link. I'm going to leave it in the description down below and you'll see it pull up this page. So pretty simple and straightforward. You're going to scroll down here to where it's got the, this information and you want to change the instance prompt to something unique. This is what you're gonna call yourself. Now, you, this needs to be a word that's not common out there in the world. Like if you called yourself Great Pyramids, it's gonna confuse you and the Great Pyramids because Stable Diffusion already has a whole base of different information. You know, if you tell it a hat, it already knows what a hat is. If you tell it a cigar, it knows what a cigar is. But if you tell it some unique identifier, it's going to associate that with what you're training it. So I'm just gonna call this 808 Dave person. Because you're not, I'm not a toy, I'm a person. Now, if you're doing this for a dog, you'd put dog. If you're doing it for a toy, you'd put toy. Whatever it is, a generic word that's gonna describe it. And it's gonna use this kind of as some background information to help it understand what it's looking at. So, I am 808 Dave person, and I wanna do a photo of a person for the class prompt. For the training steps, 2000 seems to work great. It's gonna take it a little bit longer than a normal version, but that's what I've seen to be the most successful. And then I don't click on any of these here. Um, I've never had to, but I leave the FP16 because it's gonna take about two gig of space. And this is where it's gonna load it onto your Google Drive. So when I click play, it's gonna tell me to run anyway. I'm gonna tell it to run anyways. But here in just a second, it's gonna ask for permission to join my Google Drive. There it is, permit this to access Google Drive, connect to Google Drive. Make sure you've got at least two gig. I'd say you should have four gig of empty space there. Google Drive standard comes with 15 gigs. So you should be all right. I am going to allow it to access it. Now it has somewhere to store the diffusion model that it's going to create for my pictures, okay? Give it a second. You can see this little spin here with the egg box. That means that it's actively working. And the next thing it's gonna ask for is for me to upload all my photos. Now, when it comes to photos, I screwed up royally the first time that I did this. So this is the first set of photos that I used. And you can see they're all a little different. My hair's a little longer, I've got sunglasses, variety of different poses which are good. That's a fat picture from COVID. Um, there's me and my daughter, I got some green screens, a laptop in there, a bunch of different crazy expressions. This made a horrible model. This made a completely garbled look of my face. It looked terrible, it was completely messy. So the second time, I just went and took a bunch of selfies of me. So they were all taken at the same time. I changed the background a little bit. I changed my shirts a little because you want to have some different ones. I did some from different angles. I did some wider ones, some closer ones. But I literally just spent about 10 minutes taking a whole bunch of selfies of me all at the same time. So my hair was the same length. My beard looked the same. Everything looked pretty universal and the same. This worked great. So I highly recommend you just go snap a whole bunch of new selfies of yourself and use those to train the model. Okay, so one of the things you're gonna notice, these are all the different pictures, but in order to send them up into Stable Diffusion, you need them all to be 512 by 512. So we're gonna use a special little website that's gonna make this very, very easy to do. To get all these images sized right, we're gonna pop over to brime.com. I have a link to this in the description as well. You can see you set it for 512 by 512, and I'm just gonna take all these and drag them to upload. You can see it's gonna give me one of these. I can resize, I can crop it, pull it in where I want it, pick the best angles, boom, boom, boom. Each of these is now 512. And when I'm done, 
save it as a big zip file, download it. Now I'd have all of them ready. Okay, so armed with all those ready, I go over here and I click on this one that says choose files. Now I'm choosing the files that I want to upload for Stable Diffusion to look at. And it's gonna look over these about 2,000 times per picture. It's gonna analyze every aspect of my face, my body, and try to figure out how to create a model of me in artificial intelligence. Okay, once this begins, you're gonna have a little bit of a wait. It's gonna start uploading all those different photographs, and then it's gonna to begin to process. Now this processing is gonna take 15, 20, sometimes 30 minutes. You'll wanna pop back and forth and make sure that the page doesn't time out if you leave it. I think it's like two hours you have, but um, if you leave it for too long, it will time out, and you'll have to start this whole process over again. Okay, and one thing I noticed every time, it seems to get stuck at this. You'll notice this warning, the following values were not passed to, and this bar. I always thought that that was a problem. It's not. Just let it sit. This is basically one of the last steps it's gonna do, and it's just gonna sit here for a long time, look like it's doing nothing, and then suddenly you're gonna get your pictures out the other side. And then we can start having some real fun, okay? All right, there we go. We got it all done. Uh, it looks like this one took a little longer, about 40 minutes. Last time I did them, it was pretty late at night. Maybe the computers were running a little faster. It only took about 20 minutes. Either way, you just kind of sit back and wait while that happens. And when you spit these four images out, you know it's done. These are four AI-generated images of what 808 Dave looks like according to Stable Diffusion. So you can see, pretty dang good. They get, got my face pretty right on, my beard, my eyes, my hair. Um, but now we get to go start having some fun, okay? So down here is where we're gonna actually generate our own customized pictures. So you can type a prompt of whatever you want in here and you use that keyword that you selected, uh, where was it, up here, 808 Dave Person. So I'm gonna say, a face shot in Marvel Comics style of 808 Dave. Now down here you got a few selections. Normally it standardly goes with two different samples. Your guidance scale, go anywhere between seven and a half and 12 and a half. The higher the number you go with, the closer it is to your prompt, the lower, the further away it is. Just kind of play with it because it's not a super precise science. It's just kind of a rough thing. Um, I usually leave it on 30 inference steps. The seed, that just sets off where it begins. Now, everybody I've studied continues to reiterate that this is a completely random number, but I don't find that to be the case. For example, I found that when I'm doing cartoon prompts, numbers in the 70s tend to produce really good results. Whereas if I drop it to numbers in the 30s, I get bad results. I don't know. I'm still playing around with it. If I get more information on how these seed numbers affect it, I will let you know. You can change the height and width of this, there's a limited amount of computing process. If you start asking it to do too big of images, it's not gonna make it work. I like to go with 720 by 512 because I like a little bit more of a portrait, not as much of a square. Uh, but once I've got it in there, oh, and, and if I wanted to, I can say a negative prompt. Like if I wanted to say, you know, I don't know, if I said in Paris, France, not Eiffel Tower, I could say, you know, so it would restrict that item from being in there. I don't use the negative prompts a lot. I probably need to learn to use them more. If anybody's good with them, leave me some hints in the comments. Once you've got that done, click play. Oh, and that's the error that comes up when it's out of memory. So um, I'm gonna try going back and doing a 512 by 512. I can also drop the number of inference steps. That seems to also make it run a little better when it's taking too long, but. Oh, we're still not getting it. All right, let's try going down to 20. And we'll drop it to one image for now. When you start seeing the blue loading on there, you know that you're getting a successful image. So usually I can do two, two images and I can do 720 by 512s, but it doesn't always work out. There we go. There's my Marvel comic image of 808 Dave. Let's, uh, let's add some more information to it. Let's say full color detailed. As you can see, each of these takes about five, 10 seconds to process. And it didn't go full colored, but it added some color to it. Let's try a different seed number and see what happens. So we got a lot more color in this one. I don't know that it still looks like a Marvel comic. Let's try and see if it'll let us do two this time. Okay, now we got two different ones. Wait, where's my second one? There it is. <laughs> that one even gave me a little, little text box to go with it, but you can see we're getting pretty, pretty different ideas. Now let's go down and do one in the tens. Not bad, but you know, that's way off from being a Marvel comic. That one's a little closer. Um, like I said, for some reason in the 70s, I tend to get better images. The background looks great. The background looks very comic. Let's do something different. 
course, I got to use spell check because I can't spell worth a crap. There I am as an astronaut. You can kind of see me in that one on the moon. Let's be more specific. Let's tell it to go with a higher guidance scale. So it's going to be more precise. And let's see if it'll let me do 30 inference steps. Inference steps are the number of times that it tries to, to make changes and adjustments. So I tend to find a higher number closer to 30 gets a more precise image, but not always. Beautiful thing about this is it's completely free. So you can sit there and try over and over again, kick different prompts in there, see what comes out that you like. Wow, they gave me some age in that one. <laughs> all right, that one you can't see me at all. And you can get really specific. It's not always gonna nail everything that you ask for, but, but the more specific you get, the better it is. <laughs> I actually really like these. These are great, man. <laughs> there I am in my NASA gear. Somehow I keep missing out on eyeballs in the cartoon ones. That's a really common thing, but man, that's funny. Let's try me as Harry Potter riding a broom. <laughs> Not sure what happened there. That doesn't look very Harry Potter-like. Uh, neither does that. It looks like I might have a shotgun in my hand. <laughs> my broom is broken. Okay, so let's get a little, lot more specific. Okay, um, we're gonna turn this down a little bit. We're gonna try a different one. Let's try a different seed. 808 Dave as Harry Potter riding a broom at Hogwarts, cinematic, realistic, detailed. Okay, now we're closer. That looks much, oh, look at that. That one looks, I mean, I'm not riding the broom, but that's got a very Harry Potter-esque style to it. They gave me the glasses and everything. Very cool. How about 808 Dave as a hobbit in the Shire with Gandalf and a troll? Let's see what that can do for me. <laughs> oh, too bad the faces aren't better on that one. That's great. I like the style it created there. This one got the face of me right as a <laughs> as a hobbit. Um, let's let's do a different seed. You can try a different seed and see what happens. And I don't know what the limit are for seed numbers you can do, but you can do a lot of different ones. Let's try a different seed number. Let's try upping the guidance scale to get it closer to my prompt. Okay, that one did a great cartoon one. Oh, and there I am, I'm I'm not so sure. I'm, I'm looking at, <laughs> it's like a portrait of me in a hobbit hole, um, but it's pretty doggone entertaining. All right, so there you go. There's the quick way to turn yourself into AI and create images of whatever you want. Now, if you like some of the images that I showed at the beginning or some of the ones that I've shown in this video, you can go to davidtatera.com forward slash prompt, and I'll show you a full list of all the different prompts that I used to get each of the different images that I have there. That way you can copy those prompts and try to use them by sticking your own photos in there and see what you can get out of them. Also, do me a big favor, click the like and subscribe buttons if you enjoyed and learned something from this video because I'm gonna be creating tons and tons more great AI content and I really want a chance to show it to you. And finally, if you like creating images like this one, then you really need to be checking out Mid Journey. This is the most cutting edge AI image creation tool out there right now. And I just finished a video that shows you how to create your own private little Mid Journey booth where you can work on your own project and how to update and improve any picture you ever created in the past in Mid Journey. If you wanna find out all about that, you're gonna to wanna to click up here.